Likuti Sikha is Chedich Abdallah, volume 24, the Sikha for Rosh Hashanah. This Sikha will explain the reason that's given quite often for some of the customs which we perform on or around or leading up to Rosh Hashanah, namely that it is, it's being done in order to, quote, confuse the Satan. What this means, what is this about, and how this works. Just as an introduction to, to familiarize us, ourselves with some concepts to help us better flow through the Sicha. So we have the concept of Shabbos Mevarchim. That is the Shabbos prior to Rosh Chodesh. We announce and bless the upcoming month, the new month. We announce the day of Rosh Chodesh and we bless it. Now... What is this all about? What is the idea behind it? Well, in ancient times, it was done the correct way. According to the Torah, biblically, the way Rosh Chodesh is to be decided is by actually viewing the new moon and then the Bezdin, the high court, which represents all the Jewish people, they make the decision and they announce and pronounce Rosh Chodesh. In fact, it is so much so that it is dependent on us, quote-unquote, to decide when is Rosh Chodesh, that the Medrash even relates that when the, quote, ministering angel, angels come up before Hashem and they say, when is Yom Kippur? Hashem says to them, why are you asking me? Let's go down to the Bezdin. Let's go down to the court that represents all the Jewish people and we'll see what they decided. So this is something that is dependent, dependent on us. And it's done for us by our representatives in the high court in the Sanhedrin. Now, once the Beis Hamidish was destroyed, and we can no longer do it, and now we rely on a preset formula which dictates the calendar, so we symbolically or ceremoniously, we announce Rish Chodesh, the Shabbos before, when all people, most people are in shul, gathered together, and this is a come somewhat of a symbolic of that thing, and also to remember the idea, the concept that, that it is we who announce this. That's the idea of Shabbos Mevorchim. No, so another thing to be familiar with: the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Rebbe Rashab, Rabbi Shalom of Berel Lubavitch, had an older brother who was several years older than him. Uh, the acronym of his name was Derazo. Razo is Rab, Rab Zalman Aaron, Ra, or Rabbi Zalman Aaron. The, the, the Raza was several years older than him. However, he refused to become Rebbe. And finally, when the Rebbe Rashab took it upon himself to become Rebbe, there were times that the Raza, at least in the early years, sometimes would go and perhaps make some suggestions, or if people felt that the Rebbe, for some reason, didn't uh, give them what they needed, if I may, it's hard to say, but if they, if they didn't get what they needed, Sometimes they would go to the Raza and plead with him, and he would go and beseech on the, the Rebbe on their behalf. Let's get into the Sikha. So we understand that Rosh Hashanah, which is the first day of the new year, is also likewise Rosh Chodesh. It's Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. However, when you look, look throughout the entire davening, in any which part of the, of the prayers, we do not make even one mention of Rosh Chodesh. In other words, totally ignore the fact that it's Rosh Chodesh, only talk about the fact that it's Rosh Hashanah. Why? So in the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, he gives an answer. Quote, this is to confuse the Satan, that he should know that today is Rosh Chodesh Tishrei, and therefore he will not come to be Mekatrig, to come and you know, make his accusations against the Jewish people. Now this same answer, this same reason, is also given to the fact why we do not Bless the new month. In Halach it's brought down that the reason why we don't do Shabbos and Vorachim as we typically do is also for this reason, to confuse the Satan. But the Rebbe asks, it seems that this doesn't really make sense. Why? The Satan, after all, is an angel, is a Malach. And he is somebody who comes before the heavenly court. So obviously, it would seem very obvious that he's no fool, he's no stupid idiot, that you can just confuse him and trip him up and fool him. It's something so obvious and so simple. That what? That today is Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. Obviously. 
It says it on the calendar. He doesn't know how to read the calendar. So what does this really mean? Now, in the Levush, which is one of the uh, codifiers, commentaries of Halacha, he brings a reason that he, the reason, the way he presents the reason is as follows, quote, in order to confuse the Sutton that he shouldn't know that today is Rosh Hashanah since they have not been Mekadashit, since they didn't announce it, therefore he won't know it's Rosh Hashanah, right? And as we understand, since, as we said in the introduction, since the establishment of all the Yom Imtaybim, of all the festivals, depends on us, on the Bezdin, therefore if they did not actually, actively be Mekadash the month, they didn't announce it, like, or in our case, we didn't announce the Shabbos of Archim, so then, quote-unquote, he wouldn't know that it's what a Rosh Hashanah. But when, again, this question is quite difficult. Why? Because number one, on Rosh Hashanah, we do so many different things, so many different customs, so many different symbols, which indicate very clearly and overtly that this is certainly the day of Rosh Hashanah. So how can you say because of the fact that one small fact that they did not announce it, they did not proclaim this day as Rosh Chodesh, therefore he's not going to know it's Rosh Hashanah. That's one question. Number two, this reason of confusing the Satan, that he shouldn't know it's Rosh Hashanah, he shouldn't come to accuse, is also brought and given, I mean, for other customs which we perform on or around Rosh Hashanah, and not exclusively to this, it's not exclusive to this a particular custom of not announcing Rosh Hashanah, right? For example, this is the reason why it's brought down that an Erev of Rosh Hashanah, although the entire month of Elohim was sounding the shofar every day except for Shabbos, but an Erev of Rosh Hashanah we don't sound the shofar. Why? It says because quote the Satan should know should think he'll think oh maybe Rosh Hashanah already passed. And therefore, he's not going to come to accuse. Another thing that we do, this is also the reason why, although it would make sense that we read the Torah in an annual cycle. So it would make sense that you start Rosh Hashanah and you finish before Rosh Hashanah. In other words, you start at the beginning of the year and you end at the end of the year. So it's brought down that the reason why we do not start uh, to read Bereshis on Rosh Hashanah and why we wait till after Simchas Torah is because to confuse the Satan. That he should know, he should understand, this is the words, quote-unquote, he should understand when it's the beginning of the year, if it's the end of the year, he should become all confused. And again, the question goes right back to the beginning, to the, to the, to the, to the original question. How is it possible that we do all these various customs and the reason for it is to confuse the Satan? What, especially considering that these customs are repeated year after year after year. So even if you want to say the first time somehow we, fe- we fooled him, we confused him, but how will we not, you know, catch on? And obviously, like we said, he's not stupid, he's not foolish, he's an angel, he knows what he's doing, he understands things quite well. How does this make sense? So the Rebbe says, in order to understand this, we'll preface a minig that we do, and this minute also, that's the same reason is given. That the, 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 the given reason for this minute is, again, in order to confuse the satan. What is this? What is this minute? The minute that we sound the shofar every day of Elo. And the reason that's given is he shouldn't be able to differentiate exactly and understand exactly what Rosh Hashanah is because every day we're sounding the shofar. And then again, of course, the same question can be asked. You do the Elo, we sound the shofar in, during Elo every single year. And then afterwards comes Rosh Hashanah. So what does it mean he won't know when Rosh Hashanah is? What does this mean? So Rebbe says, here is the explanation. The Gemara gives us a reason for the Tkiya shofar on Rosh Hashanah. The various sounds that we listen to. In other words, Min HaToyda, we don't have to hear all those sounds again and again, this way and that way, during the Musaf, and then again during the repetition of the Musaf. And it's enough. You just hear the shofar and, you, and, and you're done. You've fulfilled your mitzvah. Says the Gemara, Omar Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak said, 
Why is it that they sound the shofar when they're quote sitting, and then later when they and they sound it again when they're standing? Meaning when they do the amida, and first they hear the shofar before the formal uh, shofar blast. So you do as to be to the mitzvah to fulfill the mitzvah, and then later we do it again when they're standing during the amida. Says Rabbi Yitzchak, this is in order to quote confuse the satan. And Rashi explains what does it mean to confuse him? Shelo yastin, that he shouldn't come and do his work of accusing the Yidin. Why? Says Rashi, because when he will hear how the Yidin, they cherish the mitzvah so much, and how they're so diligent, and so particular about doing the mitzvah so well, this is going to basically shut him up. This is basically going to not allow him to go any further with a desire to accuse the Yidin. In other words, the fact that Yidin do not suffice with sounding the shofar just once, which is obligatory from the Torah. But rather they do it so many times, this proves that they love the mitzvah so much, and this basically shuts up the, the satan and doesn't allow him to accuse them, because how is he going to accuse them? What is he going to say? They don't like the mitzvahs? They don't want to do the mitzvahs? They're not excited about them? Well, this, by their actions, it's proven that they do. Says the Rebbe, likewise, we can explain the reason and the effect of the Tkiyah Shoifer during the month of Elul. You see, in this month, we sound the Shoifer, as it says in Pirkei Rabbi Yezer, in order to, quote, warn the people, awaken the people, that they should arouse themselves to tshuva, as it says, in is it possible that a Shoifer should be sounded in a city and people shouldn't tremble in fear? In other words, this is to arouse their, their fear and trepidation towards towards uh, Rosh Hashanah. And therefore, by this very fact, that Yidin sound the show for the entire month, the Satan will think, quote, that they already did the proper tshuva. In other words, the Satan knows that they sound it throughout the month of, of Elul, and this happens every single year. But the Satan thinks, wow, if they heard the show for a whole month, and the purpose of the show for this, in order to arouse them to tshuva, Therefore, he would think, oh, they must have already done it. And therefore, when it comes to Rosh Hashanah, it's not like he's not going to know when the actual day is. He knows the day on the calendar. But he feels like maybe there's no purpose even. He shouldn't even give it a try to try to point an accusatory finger on, on, on the Bnei Yisrael because most probably they're already in such good standing with Hashem because they've been hearing the show for a whole month. This is the idea of confusing the Satan. He thinks to himself, it's Rosh Hashanah. I have a job to do. I have to go and accuse the, the, the Eden. But I don't, I don't think I, I have any chance. And, number one, this will lead him to not being Mikatrig at all, not to accuse the Eden at all. Or even if he does try it, he is only going to be going, as it says, as the Rebbe says, al hasafik. In other words, it's going to be on an assumption of maybe, maybe he's got a little chance. And therefore, his Kitrug, his accusations will not be with the full fierceness, with the full impact. Because he's going to be kind of like very iffy. It says the Rebbe, based on this explanation that we gave for the sounding of the shofar throughout the month of Elul, we could also understand why we don't sound the shofar in Erev Rosh Hashanah. Because this confuses him even more. Because when we don't sound the shofar in Erev Rosh Hashanah, the Satan is going to think, oh, a whole month of Elul, they sounded the shofar in order to arouse them to tshuva. Now they don't need it anymore. That means they most probably did tshuva. They did a very, very good and superb tshuva. And therefore, he thinks that they already had a full awakening, and therefore he's not going to um, try to accuse them, try to be mekatrig against the Yidna on Rosh Hashanah. Now, of course, you can ask, says the Rebbe, the Satan knows all this. He knows all this, that we do this in order to confuse him. So how exactly does it confuse him? In other words, he knows this is all set up this way. It's not like we're, we're playing against him and we have some kind of trick that he doesn't know. He knows how to read the Shulchan Aruch. He knows how to read all these reasons. He knows exactly what, what the reason is. So how does it work? He says the Rebbe, well, listen, this is a Min This is a, a custom and an established Jewish tradition. Which, according to the sources, Mina Gisrael Torahi, it has the same value and the same strength as, as an actual thing that's written in the Torah, which is Torah Samus, the Torah of truth. Torah is truth. 
Bemela. Therefore, if indeed we would have been in a meritorious state, then indeed everything would have already been accomplished in the month of Elul by us sounding the shofar, and then Erev Rosh Hashanah by not sounding the shofar, and indeed the Satan would have nothing to go with and not be able to at all accuse us in any way. The issue, meaning the need for explanation, still remains with the other customs that we have not yet explained. We explained sounding the shofar in Elul. We explained not sounding the shofar on Erev Rosh Hashanah. Out of Rosh Hashanah, now we still was left to explain is why don't we mention Rosh Hashanah and why we do not read Parshas Bereshis in the beginning of the year. You see, because the above mentioned um, reasons don't seem to apply here, because all the things that we said on top was focused on a positive, a positive outcome. Meaning, we said that quote the Satan will think that we have already done Tshuva. We've already accomplished everything we had to accomplish, and we're already meritorious, and therefore, there's no point in him even giving it a try. But for these two things, the reason that's quoted is that, quote, he shouldn't know that today is Rosh Chodesh or Rosh Hashanah, right? So, it doesn't say that he shouldn't accuse us. It says that he shouldn't know that it's Rosh Hashanah. He shouldn't know it's Rosh Chodesh. How, what is the, what is the benefit the positive benefit in the fact that he doesn't know that it's Rosh Chodesh, or he doesn't know that we're not starting the new reading of the Torah. How does this help us, so to speak, with this problem, namely with the Satan? The answer is, the Rebbe says, when the Satan sees that we are lacking the benefit of these two things, meaning we don't have Rosh Chodesh, the aspect of Rosh Chodesh, which Rosh Chodesh brings in its, with, in, with, it, with itself. It brings a special his Hisoyedus, an awakening. And of course, obviously, the completion of Torah brings with it itself an even a greater awakening. When he sees that we're lacking these two things, he thinks to himself, he calculates that most likely we are deficient. We are lacking in our Avedah. And therefore, he doesn't have to put up such a fierce Kitruk, such a fierce accusations against the Jews because they're already not in such good standing. In other words, he doesn't, he doesn't pull out all his strength. He doesn't approach this with his full might because he has like, he feel, he has like a sense of confidence that since they're lacking those things, eh, most probably he doesn't have to work so hard. Now, of course, you can ask, he knows this is a setup. This is totally pre-planned, Right? So how exactly does this weaken him? The answer is, the bottom line, says the Rebbe, when you're lacking these two things, then you're also missing the schusim, the merits that come with these two things, namely Rosh Chodesh and completion of the whole entire Torah. And therefore he thinks that they are somewhat weaker and he doesn't accuse them as strong. He doesn't go at it so strongly. Now, of course, you can ask the question, okay, this is the effect of it. But how indeed do we take away, do we prevent, eliminate such great things from the Avoid of B'nai Yisrael only to confuse the Satan? The answer is, when these two things are missing, these two aspects, and it's all because of the Satan, and we know that, we are aware of the fact that the reason why we don't have it is because of the Satan, because of the potential of the Satan accusing us. This in itself, says the rabbi, triggers a tremendously deep avoidus hachuva, even more than if we would have had these two aspects. In other words, in, not only is our avoidus not diminished, it is actually elevated and intensified because we're lacking these two things. This gives us a greater sense of avoidus and a greater sense of hachuva. And it says the rabbi, in fact, even a greater tshuva. Why? You see, let's say, for example, Kiyah Shoifer in itself is supposed to trigger in us an awakening for tshuva. But it's coming from something outside of ourselves. It's some, come, something from an, an object that is separate from us that triggers us. But here, when we're lacking these two things, Rosh and the completion of the Torah, this comes from within us, a sense 
of tshuva, a sense of his oiderus, a sense of awakening, which is actually more intense and much greater than if we would have had those things. And the Rebbe brings for this a story, an actual story, which happened with the Rebbe Rashab in the beginning, in the early years of his leadership. That a yid came to him, and he had a serious problem, and he asked for bracha, and the Rebbe told him, I'm sorry, I can't help him. So he, he went out from the Rebbe, he felt so bad, so helpless, that he started to cry, and he cried, it was very audible, he was crying and sobbing loudly. And as he was walking away from the Rebbe's room, he couldn't control himself, he was crying. The Raza, that's the Rebbe's older brother who happened to walk by, he noticed him and he said, Abid, what's going on? And he told him the whole story. So the Raza went in to this brother, to the Rebbe Rashab, and he shared with him what he just experienced, that this Yid was so deeply moved and so sad and so full of sorrow that he was crying loudly, he was totally broken. The Rebbe said, so, call him back in, and he put on his hat, he put on his gartel, and he called the Yid, and, I mean, the Yid came in, and he gave him a bracha, and indeed, the bracha materialized. So the Rebbe says, let's analyze this for a moment. What happened over here? Why couldn't the Rebbe Rashab help him? Why didn't he help? And later he did. It seems like, oh, because of the intervention of his older brother? Is that really what changed everything? He says, the Rebbe, no. This year when he came in, the first time, initially, indeed the Rebbe saw that he can't help him. There's nothing to go with. However, after he was crying so profusely, and he was so broken, he did shuva. Now he was he was roi. Now he was fit, he was befitting him. He was um, uh, he he was uh, capable of receiving this bracha and it materializing. So bimela, what the rebbe did by not helping him, by telling him I can't help you, by that the rebbe triggered in him such a deep shuva that came from the depth of his heart. And this is similar to that idea. By not having those things, it, and because it's because of the satan, this triggers a much deeper tshuva within us. The Rebbe says it can take it even to a deeper level. Not only is the lacking of these, of these things, these men hug him, does it trigger a great deep tshuva, but if you think about it, the actual idea of not having them, this is a fulfillment of the Torah. In other words, if our fulfillment of Torah and mitzvahs was based on rationale and on understanding, then you say, listen, if you don't have it, you haven't fulfilled it. You didn't do Torah mitzvahs. But if the reason why we do Torah mitzvahs is super rational, is lemaila mitambadas, then the fact that the minig, that the custom, which is, like we said before, a minig is Torah, the fact that the custom calls for not doing it, this is as if it's even greater. It's as if it was done. Then, in other words, without doing it, without celebrating Rosh Chodesh, without actually completing the Torah, we have the aspects of it as we are fulfilling the Torah. And this certainly all brings to the ultimate Ksiva Vachsim Teva, Lishana Teva Mesukah.